Hello, everyone. I'm Yamino, the artist of Sister Claire, and I'm joined tonight by... The one, the only, the incredible, the indelible, Ash Barnes. I write the missing moments, and I help Eleanor write the comic. <clears throat> That's me. Yes. <laughs> Eleanor's Yamino, for those I'm of you who don't know. Elena. 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 <laughs> Aw. Elena, if you're Italian. Elena, if you speak Spanish. Eleonora, if you don't know what the fuck my name is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or Eleanor, if you're my grandmother. Or Elena, if you're American. <laughs> Please don't call me Elena. <sighs> Proxy says, hi, we love you. Hi, I love you too. Kissy. <laughs> That's lips. I'm going to make them even sexier. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the hairier lips are, the more sexy they become. Oh. oh. The Here are my eyes. I kiss you. Oh. <laughs> what a fantastic work of art. <laughs> I... <clears throat> <laughs> like, I'm scared. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> um, where, what was the name of the missing moment where I showed Catherine and Oscar in the outfits? I don't think draws a birth. It was birth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> Answering my own question. Shoot, don't do that. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> I haven't actually figured out what they're going to be doing. Do you want to ask for suggestions? Okay, but something simple, please. <laughs> I mean, simple is better when it comes to a wallpaper. Yeah. What if it's like them holding arms, like linking arms and looking out as though... You know, they can be doing the princess wave, you know, and there can be confetti, like, yeah. they're waving at their adoring fans from on top of a float, like the Queen of England. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Elena, for that great suggestion. You're welcome, Elena. Anything for you, Elena? <laughs> Do you remember this? <gasps> That's so beautiful and way more gorgeous than what I'm going to draw right now. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful fan art. <clears throat> it is so pretty. So pretty. You know, I'm going to go into the height chart and double check just how much taller Oscar is. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> she's almost like two heads taller than Catherine. Why yes. are these pictures coming up when I search height? They have nothing to do with it. I think Oscar is 6'1 and... Catherine is 5'4". <clears throat> Here we go. Here's my height chart. The numbers mean nothing to my art-centered mind. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to take Oscar from here, and I'm going to... There. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> She's so tall. <laughs> Catherine's head only comes up to, like... Well, Chin. It comes up to her chin. It's not too bad. I, I forgot. It's, it's, for it's, some reason, I thought it came up to like her boob, but no, she's... It's our height difference, Elena. I'm not 6'2". No, but I'm not 5'4". <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. So her head comes up to Oscar's chin. Hi, Matt. Hi. Oh. Did you just get out of a final, dear heart? Ugh. Oh, Matt says he's been working on his final project all day. Oh. That sucks. What project is that? Yeah, what is it? And while you answer, I'm going to look up Chinese food. Oh, what? I just realized that Oscar and Catherine can't really link arms without it being really awkward. 
That's sad. Sad. No, they can link arms. You and I can. Arms move, Elena. I know, but like, look, it goes like. <sighs> so like her arm can go here. I guess instead of linking it that way, Catherine can just be like holding her arm. Yeah. And Oscar will just be awkwardly hanging her arm here and waving like a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> and Catherine's like, take a deep breath. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Matt says, uh, it's a website, his project. He said, I made my portfolio website for my internet class. Cool. Oh, and um, Sefi had a suggestion. She said Oscar's arm can be over her shoulder and Catherine's arm around her waist. It could be. That is a thought. Aw, oh, Art CMK asks, how was Iceland? Oh, it was so phenomenal. I'm really glad that Ash took us. It was amazing. <laughs> the, uh, where should I begin? The ponies, the rock formations, the glaciers, the... Aurora Borealis that I didn't truly really see. <laughs> I hear great things <laughs> about the Aurora. I already want to go back. <sighs> it's definitely a very underrated destination. Well, it's getting more and more popular as time goes on. Especially since they're offering really cheap tickets to entice people. Yeah. <gasps> Speaking of. <laughs> oh. uh. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Greetings from sunny Reykjavik. Hello, Dave. I have to Hi. eat fish shits. So I don't lose my mind. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, where was Catherine's arm going to be? Around her waist. Okay, yeah, that's what I was doing. Oh, uh, Matt says, okay, Elena, you remember the Iron Giant Sister Claire in a Nutshell video I made? Yeah. Matt's, is that in your portfolio? <laughs> well, Matt says, remember how you said, this is the good shit, Matt, more of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Did you do another one? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, huh? There's more. Uncle <laughs> <laughs> have the good shit too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. Oscar, where the hell is your arm going? Ah, uh, Brother Nerd and Proxy both say he did and he done it. I want to see. I don't know, this looks a little weird. Okay, well. Well, let me try to bring Oscar a little closer. <laughs> you made her look. <laughs> so funny. You should, you should go to the chat and click on the video and we should all watch it together. Okay. Matt has made us a gift. Oh. 
so good. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Matt. <laughs> it was about to autoplay something else. Oh, sh well, it wasn't. Yeah, I know. It wasn't something related. I know, but like, I, I closed you, it. You stopped it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I closed it. Oh my God, that was so great. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What was, what was the one who's supposed to be Lara saying? The nice teacher lady. I she was. Hear it. I, I don't know exactly what she said because I was too busy cackling. Um, I'll watch it again later. But it's been like 200 years since I watched Monsters, Inc., so I don't remember a lot of it. She says something like, oh, hello, dear, or something nice. <laughs> like, like Laura would actually say, this is excellent. Thank you so much, Matt. You did such a great job. <laughs> 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 <sighs> 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 oh, I will watch it again later with glee. See, the thing is... This just looks a little bit too casual. Okay, well. I think I'm just doing a bad job interpreting the vision. Do you wanna do you wanna me to Google some pictures for you? No. Okay. No, no, no. No, I do it. I'll have her hand just going like that over Catherine's shoulder. Okay. Oh. <sighs> This is definitely, Laura has said it plain. She said, Matt, this is another masterpiece. It is. <laughs> it truly is. <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> what was that capacity thing? Huh? I don't know. It flashed up. It was an error. Alex is asking if I saw their art submission and says it's the Siren Graveyard. Idea. Yeah, yeah, I showed it to you. Did you? Mm -hmm. It was sent by email, and I showed it to you when we were at... Uh... That's right, yes, I remember. It looked really cool. Mm -hmm. What a good interpretation. More of our personal comments on various things that have been submitted will be visible beneath them when they go up on the site. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't show it yet. You should wait. You should wait to see it when it goes up on the site. Yeah. <clears throat> Artsy said, Laura said there were still a few slots left. Oh, well, I'm... She would definitely be the one to ask. Um, when it comes to counting things, <laughs> it's, let's definitely leave it to Laura. Um, oh my god, why do I always make everybody a giraffe? I'm trying to remember who you drew recently, who you gave a really long, graceful neck to. Swan neck. Yeah. It's just when I do the sketch, it looks right, and then I do the details over it, and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> You okay, dear? Mm, my stomach hurts. Mm. Oh. Mm. If we're done by 11... Can we get Chinese food? Yeah. I will aim to be done by 11. Okay. <clears throat> Aww. Artsy said, I am doing a Michelle, Sylvia, and Mamo one. <gasps> Ooh. I can't wait to That's, see it. He's very exciting. Very exciting, very exciting. Basically, every time I draw this crown, I'm just making it up. Because I've only drawn it from the side. Uh... 
<laughs> it's it doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Just wing it. Yeah, it's not like we have fans who like really care about paying attention to every tiny minute detail. And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they're not going to fault you if the crown looks kind of funky. Yeah, no, they're going to because <laughs> they know I'm self conscious about it. Now, now, now. Alex said, I started working on the picture as soon as you guys announced about the art submissions. Aww. Thank you so much. Needs to be taller. Seppi said, Elena, I drew the crown from the front before if you want to use that as a reference. It's okay, I'm already here. <laughs> <laughs> She's already suffering, Seppi. <laughs> I'm already disinvolved. I feel like someone's kicking me in the stomach. Oh dear. Like, I don't even feel like I'm going to be ill or anything. I wonder, I really wonder if I had something and I've passed it on to you. Because you remember how, like, a couple weeks ago, I was also complaining occasionally of these really sharp pains? Yeah. Oh. I wonder. I'm sorry if I got you sick. Mm. But for what it's worth, that's pretty much all that should happen, so... Oh, Artsy said, I have loved the dreamy aspect of recent pages. Oh, I'm really glad. It's <clears> actually <throat> a very easy effect to do, but it's also very easy to overdo it and make the page incomprehensible. But I can show you the secret. So let's pretend this is a finished page. I'll go to Window, Channels, and click on the red channel. And when it's all selected, let me zoom in a little more. So this is just the red in the picture. I will stretch it out ever so slightly. And then when you go look at it, it has that like weird kind of distorted look that I think gives it a very kind of, I don't know, surreal feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, don't close that picture. No. <clears throat> and there's a lot of ways that you can tweak the layers. Like if I wanted to, someday do a comic that look 3D, you can do a lot more detailed tweaking of those layers to look at it with 3D goggles and make it actually appear to have three dimensions. Mm -hmm. I did that with um, a panel of Rosie that I don't think I've actually posted online. Let me see if I can find it. Um, maybe may not. What if I just search 3D? What if I search 3D and it's <clears throat> oh yeah, here it is. So, I know that you can't really tell looking at it, but I promise you that if you looked at this with 3D glasses, red and blue, it would look three-dimensional. Like, her hand and her face and her body are the closest things. The things that look further apart, like Marie here, it appears as farther away because it mimics the way your eye sees things. Mm -hmm. So your eye would see things that are far away from two slightly different angles and the things that are closer up, you would see um, more close together. Yeah. Little lesson in whatever that's called, I can't remember now. There's a special word for 3D that's with blue and red. You know what you should do here, Elena? What? You should have Oscar's hand on Catherine's shoulder, like, clenched really tight. I can do that. And Catherine's smile is a little strained, and she's looking at it like, Oscar, call your tits. <laughs> Catherine's looking at her like... Yes, this is definitely Catherine. I'm just going to leave it right there. <laughs> God, okay, please get rid of it. It's bothering me. Dear Catherine, you should never look like that. <laughs> now she looks like Alphonse from Full Metal Alchemist. And now she's a goldfish cracker.
the snack that smiles back. <sighs> Enough messing about. <laughs> <laughs> Enough tomfoolery. Frivolity. Frivolity. Well mannered frivolity. That was one of the best lines ever. Who says that? It's Maggie Smith when she's teaching. I knew it would be Maggie Smith just from the way you said it. Yeah. It's Maggie Smith teaching um, the Hogwarts students how to dance for the Yule Ball. Oh. And she said, we will be engaging in well-mannered frivolity. <laughs> and I remember when I was in the theater, I did this really loud. Ha! Ha! <laughs> I really wish it was snowing instead of raining. That snow traps us. Hmm. You know what I wish? Hmm. That we had found kittens in the bushes. Me too. And that we could have kittens and a nice fire in the fireplace and hot chocolate and Kittens covered in s'mores. And <laughs> Elena, you're making it sound like you're going to eat the kittens. <laughs> um, oh, Byzantine Fire asks, speaking of Full Metal Alchemist, will you be seeing the live action film? Absolutely. I am so excited about it. Like, I know I should be skeptical because pretty much every live action film that has been adapted from an anime has sucked gigantic baboon ass. However, every clip I see of Alphonse looks so amazing that I'm, I'm really trying, you know, I'm really excited and trying not to get my hopes up too much. I thought the Yatterman movie was pretty good. Okay, well, I've never... the source material, but, you know, the Yatterman franchise is really corny and stupid, so <laughs> <laughs> it lended itself well to a really over-the-top movie version. Mm. Oh, now this is an interesting thing. ArtsyMK asks, how have you two been regarding the whole Patreon fiasco? You know, Elena and I have not had a ton of time yet to engage with it. I've been looking at like what a lot of people are saying on Twitter, and I pretty much agree with a lot of creators who are saying this is really not fair to our patrons. And I'm feeling kind of, I don't know, crushed right now because I just don't know what to do about it. I'm hoping that it gets resolved by enough people complaining to Patreon. Mm -hmm. But I just don't understand why when they are the only company that does what they do, that they would try to push people to a competitor. Cause like, yeah, this is just making the market extra ready <clears throat> to have a competition for Patreon. And I may switch us to that if it comes to it right now. It really, <clears throat> it really hurts the, the people who don't, pledge a ton it's worth like they don't even allow one dollar pledges anymore apparently <clears throat> do they not apparently that's what that was the last thing i was hearing unless it's something that they were thinking of implementing um i just know i mean they still allow dollar pledges but like you have to the person doesn't pay a dollar they have to pay extra mm -hmm. which sucks yeah and i know so i've seen so many creators complaining about this saying that if those fees were going to be levied on anybody, it should have been us, the creators. Yeah. Like, we don't want y'all paying that. You all y'all already, you know, are kind enough to support us in terms of there being a cut taken. If it was going to be taken from anyone, it should be us. There is something that some patrons are doing, and they're changing their pledges mm -hmm. so that uh, basically it will take out the whatever Patreon will be charging mm -hmm. um, so that you pay less and it will end up being the same amount you were paying before, but it doesn't work for $1 patrons because mm. that's the only thing. <clears throat> yeah. It's not like... <clears throat> ultimately, it's not like a giant increase for people or anything, 
but to me it's just really insulting and it makes it hard for us creators to encourage people to support us because now we can't say only a dollar a month you know we have to do this really bullshit a dollar and some change hey you know <clears throat> I've been reading a lot of hot takes about it. I can tell you, I can tell all of y'all that pretty much no creators are happy with this. I haven't seen anybody who is praising the decision. And this is... Most creators are going to be hurt by it because we're going to be losing patrons Yeah, now. yeah. And what some of the comments I've read from the Patreon staff, like replying to people, are really just upsetting and disheartening. They're basically saying things like, well... In, in other words, they're saying it doesn't really matter to us if we lose these low-level people using Patreon because what we really want is just to have super highly successful, like, life-changing Patreon users that we can use to better mm -hmm. advertise the site. Yeah. And to them, it's just bad marketing to see somebody who only gets, like, 50 or or $100 a month or something. Like, under a certain threshold, they consider you worthless. So mm -hmm. that's really crappy. Yeah. And that threshold probably is above what we do. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like they're going to be super sympathetic to us. <clears throat> I mean, I can tell all of y'all that this is not something that they put by creators first in the least. Like The first time we heard about it was when they sent the message saying they were rolling it out. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> She's looking at her arm being crushed. <laughs> she should instead be looking at Oscar and doing a very strained smile. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like she's looking at Oscar's boobs. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see, but Catherine does look like Claire. Here, you think so? Mm hmm When Catherine has a goofy expression on her face, uh -huh. it looks Especially like Especially this expression. Now let me change <clears throat> one little thing. There you go. <laughs> now <laughs> let me change one more little thing. There you go. Okay, the mouth is a little low, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at our Patreon. Have we lost people? Um, last time I checked, we were doing okay, but yeah. I think part of the reason that we're okay is because we actually don't have a $1 tier. It starts at 3 I No, think. we definitely have oh, a $1 yeah. tier, and we have 57 patrons. Oh, shit. <sighs> oh, yeah, we have actually lost yeah, almost we $100. Have. That's not necessarily true. That it could just be. <clears throat> it was only at one uh, uh, thousand sixty-four. No, it wasn't. Ash, it was at one thousand one hundred something last time I looked. Oh yeah, there are some people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame the people who drop their pledges. No. I blame Patreon. Me neither.
Hmm. Now Catherine just looks like she's also hating waving at people. Yeah, like her eyes aren't pointed in, at the right in the right place. She needs to be looking up at Oscar. You also haven't finished drawing Oscar's clenching hand yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, dear. Oh, I have another idea too. I could have her. <laughs> like she's <laughs> hissing something at her while she's <laughs> looking away. <right here. laughs> I don't know how to speak pig Latin, but I want to have her say something like "exne" on the R from the shoulder crushing me. <laughs> Hmm. And she just looks like she's possessed again. Yeah. <laughs> or like she really, really, Has really. To go to the bathroom. Yeah, I was gonna say. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oscar, you know when you squeeze me there, it triggers my poop reflex. <laughs> I'm going to gift Catherine with a push-up bra. You know, while we're sitting here, I might as well work on postcards. As I almost dropped them all over the floor, that's great. we have not sent them out this month yet. Oops. Oh, it's not an oops. You know, we usually wait for uh, the funds and stuff to clear before we send them out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I have to now find the link that Laura sent me. And that reminds me, does anyone have any questions? Oh my goodness. What a gigantic list. This may take a while. Okay. <clears throat> oh, a while is what I got. Hmm.
<clears throat> I don't know if it's really obvious that Oscar is crushing her shoulder. Artsy says, this is a good question, is the latest missing moment the start of what we see in Rosie's love-hate relationship with Catherine? And how they seem to forget Catherine was from Throne of Mare as well. Well, those are like, okay, so I think this is, you know, definitely, yeah, the first missing moment where we see that that conflict really start to come up. Uh, <clears throat> As to them not realizing Catherine is from Throne of Mare 2, is it, like, I'm going to have to sit here and question my own canon, has it ever been implied that, like, Catherine wasn't from there because she would have a similar accent to Oscar? Hmm. You don't think she would have kept her old accent? Not after living in Throne of Mare that long. You'd be surprised. You should listen to my Aunt Giovanna. She still speaks like I she know. just got off the boat from I, Italy. I know, but she was, you know, she's old. Catherine was 11, 12. She was in her 20s when she moved <clears throat> to the U.S., but she's just too mm -hmm. Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go ink this now. And Artsy also asks, is there concept art for adult nib in the current timeline, I mean? Not yet. <clears throat> oh, Lara's right. Yeah, Catherine asks the twins, did Oscar ever tell you why Throne of Mare was abandoned? She must have had a reason to take you from there. I think, like, the twins know that Catherine was a refugee, too. They might not have put it together that she also came from Throne of Mare, or... <clears throat> then again, I think they do know that Oscar and Catherine grew up together. Mm. I think it's... I don't see how that implies that she... that Catherine is not from there. That's true. Oscar took the twins, but the twins might not necessarily know that Oscar took this... Took mm -hmm. them too. Yeah. Yeah, Laura's also right. Um, that is a line of dialogue that's marked for revision, so it may be changed before we print book mm -hmm. two. There is some there are some parts, especially at the beginning of book two, that do need to have not a ton of editing, just the smidgen. Now that we've smoothed out the story and now that we have a very, at least, I'm not going to say very clear idea, but a clearer idea of where it's ultimately going to go. And now, too, that we have an editor to help us. <clears throat> like, I will say that the twins definitely know that Oscar and Catherine go way back, but it's also possible that, you know, they they understand that Catherine and Oscar aren't their biological parents and that Oscar took them from somewhere. They might be under the impression that Catherine had nothing to do with that, which in fact is true. Catherine was not there in Throne of Mare at the time, which might be a tiny bit of a spoiler, but then again, not really if people have been uh, paying attention to any live rights. Like that comes up over and over again in live rights, that Catherine and Oscar weren't in the same place when Throne of Mare fell. Mm. 
<clears throat> good questions. Very good questions. Yeah. Ding. Wow, your computer battery does deplete really fast. Yeah, may have to uh, end this sooner than later. Hmm. All right, next postcard. <clears throat> oh my. This is so cool. I love doing postcards. I'm about to send one out to Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Not someone named Sydney. Oh, Matt says, I have a few questions for you, Ash. Oh, and Proxy says, Ash, Ellen, and Laura, have any of you read my second sister, Hoshikofik? It's got vampires. I have not read it yet, but now I'm really excited. What's the first one about, or what is the premise? I'm unfamiliar. It's got vampires. Um, well, I'm excited too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what more explanation does it need? <laughs> I almost choked on my own spit. That's great. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Matt says, in your personal opinion, what are the main ingredients for a compelling character? Lesbian. Uh, oh, sorry. I thought we were talking about for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking me. Oh. Um, so, like... Yes, that's, uh, that's always a plus. However, um, not necessarily a requirement. Uh, well, can I just say there's no character that wouldn't be more compelling if they were a lesbian? Think of any male character and then imagine if they were a lesbian. Wouldn't you like it more? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. Bye, Mike. Goodbye. Um, so my answer to that question, the what are the main ingredients for a compelling character? Okay, so some people agree. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I would think of would be not... Not to have them be flat. I mean, in in terms of, like, no one is either a hero or a villain. Like, there are people who do good things, and there are people who do bad things. But I think something that every author needs to remember is that most people do both good and bad things for a reason. And that to those people, sometimes doing a bad thing isn't necessarily bad considering where they're coming from or in like take Abraham in her mind so many of the things that she does she knows they're bad but they're also in her mind necessarily bad like they someone has to do it and that someone has to be her is that a villain or is that someone who has been burdened with hideous purpose um and two, when you think about heroes, like, is Clementine a hero? Like, I think that's something that has, you know, been debated by 
tons and tons of people, especially after the fall of Eden, like, in a very short time, she took it into her own hands to make this sanctuary for people. And looking at it from the outside in, you're like, oh, well, you know, what a nice thing to do. Uh, something that she felt was necessary. And she tried to do it in the best way, but it went up so fast and fell even faster. Um, <clears throat> so I guess what I'm saying is, don't try to write a character who is evil for the sake of being evil. And even more importantly, don't try to write a character who is good for the sake of being good. No one likes characters like that. Not really. <clears throat> it's fine if you write a character who does nice things for other people simply because, you know, in general, not behaving like a gigantic asshole is preferable. Um, but often those characters aren't that interesting. And no one really wants to read a story about just that one character. Not all the time. People want to see motivations. People want to see, or if you're going to write about a good character, a character who is, you know, doing things for other people that, you know, are okay, they're nice, then why are they doing those things? How are they, you know, how are they reacting to these other people? Um, are they coming off as sanctimonious to the other people? Uh, what do the other people think about this person? Do they think the person is nice, or do they, are they really suspicious of the nice person? Like, yeah. Yeah, Zach really had a good point. He says, the difference between a martyr, a savior, a revolutionary, a terrorist, and a brother are all the perspective from which you see them. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> oh, let's see. In terms, too, of making a compelling character, uh you have to not let them be good at everything. This character, whoever they're going to be, like, chances are they're going to be your baby. Like, and you have to understand that if you want this character to be relatable, then they have to have flaws, they have to have various shortcomings, they have to have things that they're not able to do just because they're, you know, human. Uh, maybe they've no, got not necessarily not necessarily human, but they have to be relatable as well. Relatable I'm to by humans. Yeah. So, you know, your character may be good at a lot of things, but maybe they're really bad at getting up in the morning. Uh, <laughs> maybe they're really afraid of spiders. Maybe they tend to be fairly wonderful and charming, but they're also prideful, and that goes to their heads sometimes. Oscar! <coughs> um. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I have anything else to say. Something that I've seen a lot of people try to do and really fail at is to write a character who is completely different from themselves without doing enough research about it, and it ends up coming off as a stereotype. Um, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> TLDR. Uh, try to look at your character like Zach has uh, very kindly laid out for us here. That really was an excellent statement, Zach. Try to look at your character from different perspectives um, and try not to make them too much of one thing. By the same token, try not to make them too much of everything. Just think about yourself and the things you're good at and the things you're not and try to imagine 
you know, where your character would fall on a similar scale. <clears throat> What a good question. I say as it lets me blather along, along like an expert. Matt says, what about character development? I've noticed quite a few of yours develop and bond over different forms of suffering, like poverty, prejudice, trauma. I think it's more like they're not so much bonding over like, hey, we had a shitty time, although that does happen. But it's more like those shitty times bring people together uh, and put characters that might not have necessarily spoken before or been near one another into the same place physically. And maybe that trauma does give them something to relate to, well, something that they all have in common. But eh, I tend to try to more use trauma as something that moves people in a physical way moves them around on the map like little push pins. <clears throat> and in terms of character development, I like to think that people can change. Sometimes not for the good, <laughs> but most of the time I like to think that people or characters can learn from a mistake and try to grow from it. Sometimes they recognize that they have made a mistake and they try to correct it and they end up overcorrecting at, like you would in a car and they end up running into a tree. Um, you were going to say something else. What? They end up, over, they end up overcorrecting like you did with our car paint yesterday, Elena. I was not going to mention it at all. <sighs> Let's not talk about it. I don't want to get upset again, okay? <sighs> but no, they end up like, you know, overcorrecting and running into a tree. Uh... Another good example of this is Oscar and, you know, also Catherine. They realize they have made a mistake with the twins and they keep making bad decisions. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Hmm, let's see. Character development. Um, I like thinking that people can escape from abusive relationships and treat themselves in a way that is a direct turnaround from how their abuser might have treated them. Sometimes I think about character development that way. I like to think about things that might have, things their abuser might have done that might have left lingering fingerprints on their behavior uh, and how those things can eventually get smudged away or can morph into something else. Hmm. In terms of not talking about trauma, <laughs> I like to think of how just moving to different places or like when new people come into a situation, I like thinking of how other characters adapt to that. Are they jealous? Are they happy? Like that sort of thing. Good question. Let's write another postcard. What's up, dear? Yeah. When do you want to leave for the Chinese food place? I mean, they're open till eleven. Yeah, but where is it? How long do oh, we have to Oh, it's it's not there? it's not far. It's only like ten minutes. Where is this place? It's uh, China Walk. It's it's over near. The, not South Point movie theaters, but the movie theaters we used to go to with Liz. With the glasses and the tasty green apple drink. I thought that was a way it's a way. No, it's not. Isn't it like at least 20 minutes? No. It's right down MLK. Okay.
Hmm. Brother Nerd asks, are there any current canon plans for the area north of Salvation and the Abbeys? Hmm. I would have to look at a map and think about it for a little bit, but my tentative answer there is probably. Matt says, I have another writing question, but this is more of a quick, fun request. How would you go about describing the feeling you get right before snowfall? Dread. <laughs> Someone else said that. Dread. A slight dread and also wonder. The feeling right before snowfall, when the sky is that, like, funny silvery white color, and there's no real clouds but no real sky either. I feel like I'm trapped in a box. Mm. <laughs> I've lived in England, you know. Well, that kind of weather doesn't hold any wonder for me. It holds just eternal sadness. Hmm. No blue skies. I, like, I really like snow. And for me, that moment right before it actually starts to snow, like, I feel so jittery and excited about it that I feel like I am in a snow globe that has been shaken and I'm waiting for all of the stuff at the top to finally make it to where I can see it coming down. That is how I would describe it. But that's me. I like snow. I've never had to deal with, you know, the truly negative aspects of snow. Hey, Matt, guess what I'm doing right now? I'm, ooh, sorry. I'm writing you a postcard. Aw, I tried to draw hearts, and one of them is kind of sad looking. This is why Elena's the artist. <laughs> Even I mess up hearts from time to time. I'm just gonna put that over there. Oh boy. Hmm. Oh! Um, Sefi just said to Laura, um, hmm. <laughs> Seffi said, we might get our first snow in New York City at like 5 a.m., Laura. Which reminds me, in February, Laura and I are going to New York City while she visits. And we will be doing a Sister Claire meetup at, um, see, this is why uh, we have a Google Doc that says all the details because my brain cannot hold them all. Um... Laura, is it on a Saturday? Is that when the meetup is? Help me. <laughs> um, I think it is. I think it is. We will certainly post about it. But I am very excited because not only will I get to see all you fine people, well, some of you fine people, <laughs> uh, but it did because we are going to do the meetup and it's going to be great. Um, but Laura's never been to New York before and she gets to enjoy New York. Hopefully it is not like, 
miserable weather. Hopefully it snows and it's all soft and white and pretty and not rainy and gross and frigid and bleh. <laughs> No, Matt, the, the meetup's not the entire weekend. We will, like, we will be there a few days, but the meetup's only on one day. Hmm. Oh, Zach, I really wish we could have a meetup in Australia. Matt asks, when was the last time you guys did postcards? Last month. <clears throat> if you have not gotten yours yet, don't be surprised. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if you haven't gotten yours yet, don't be surprised. Sometimes postcards take a long time to arrive during the holiday season. You've never gotten one? Hmm. Might want to double check that address. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, just in general. Oh, the P.O. box thing, I did pay for it again, but let me go check on it uh, on Monday and make sure everything's okay. Yeah, I've been wondering about that if it was still... We haven't checked that in forever. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I handled it. I mean, I haven't, we haven't checked to see if there's mail in Oh, there. yeah, no. Not in a couple weeks, anyway. Um, <clears throat> but let's Hopefully see. Nobody sent anything perishable. I'm sorry that you hadn't gotten hadn't gotten any postcards yet, Matt, because we do send them every month. If, like, in the future, this is to everyone, not just Matt. If you think you're not getting postcards, please send me <clears throat> send me uh, or us. A message on Patreon and let us know. Like, we can't begin to try to fix the issue until, like, we're told about it. 
And sometimes we'll get messages from people who are like, I haven't gotten a postcard in a long time. And sometimes that's because the address on Patreon is wrong. Sometimes that's just because the mail system eats postcards. I try to get pretty sturdy ones. Um, <clears throat> and both Laura and Elena can vouch for the fact that we do actually do them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I have to draw on each and every one. Yeah, Elena has to draw on each and every one, and I write a personalized message to everyone. I do them all by hand. So, like, Matt, I'll send you a couple of extra ones this time to make up for it, because that's just not right. But please, everyone, if you're not getting them, let me know. I want you to get them. We work really hard on them. I might only get through the inking of this before we have to go. Okay. We could maybe... We don't have anything scheduled for tomorrow, do we? Oh, I'm going to see Nancy's show. I meant, like, tomorrow night. We don't have any other live draws. Don't think so. We can maybe finish it then. <laughs> or I could, you know, finish it when I have time. Yeah, but it would be it would be good to go ahead and not only get it out of the way, but um, give it to people so they can use it. Let's uh, let's just check the schedule before we okay. make a promise right now. Yeah, I'm not making a promise. It was that was a definite maybe. <laughs> Sometimes people addresses are, people's addresses are so long that they can barely fit on the postcard. <laughs> I see it marching toward the margin, and I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, can I fit it? And I write pretty small. Valencia. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. People in the chat are asking if uh, we're going to print uh, the missing moments along with book two. No, 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 no. We're not printing the missing moments yet. We still have not decided a format for printing those. That's going to be such a clusterfuck. <laughs> yeah, that might be a little bit of a... I'm, I'm so scared to even get into that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're definitely going to have to split it into multiple volumes, BGB. I mean, it's going to be like encyclopedias worth at this point. Yeah, there's a lot of writing there. I'm writing a postcard to Jamie. Hmm. It would be so great if I could stop misspelling things. Oh, I wish my stomach would stop hurting.
Good heart, Sash. <laughs> I just proudly showed Elena my shitty little hearts that I draw. No, they're good. Matt says, speaking of missing moments, I'm well on my way with the missing moments transcript. Like, 10 missing moments down, 50 million to go. Transcript? How do you mean? Ooh, that's a cool effect, Ella. Yeah, I like this. It's a cheat. <laughs> it's cheap. Hey, Jackster, yeah, ask us the question. We would be very happy to get it. Oh, I'm going to write a postcard to Grant. finished inking. Good. Do you have enough battery to color it? Maybe. Maybe. Should try. If you're okay. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna finish it. It would be, you know, you could try. And if you I'll don't... i as far as I can. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be done. Okay. A cat has all those glasses. <laughs> anaglyphs, that's what these are called. Anaglyphs, ah. It's called an anaglyph when you have a 3D blue and red image. Mm. That's right. Jackster asks, what was the original plan for the Catherine possessed by Grimm plot? I don't remember. It was eight <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, Elena does not... I thought it was cool. <laughs> Wow, Catherine has such long fingers. Hmm. Like her hand is as big as Oscar's almost. Well, my window is gone. Oh, Matt says he's writing all the text of every missing moment page in a Google Doc. Hmm. Guess it does make it easier to search. That's going to be a big Google Doc. We could, yeah, I don't know if it should all be in one Google Doc, but that could be very useful for when we do transcripts for the blind. Mm -hmm. For screen readers, mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. That was... Um, something that I had intended to do. Alrighty. Postcard. But that's really awesome, Matt. That is really cool. So much effort. Yes, very much effort.
how long do you think you're going to need to get your food? Because we have to drive there, we have to order and wait for them to make it. Are you not going to get anything? <clears throat> Me? No. Yeah. You don't want anything? No, but you should need something. I mean, I could call ahead <clears throat> so it's ready by the time we get there. I think you should look at the menu and see if you see anything you like, okay? Aw, <laughs> Matt said that he doesn't want help with the project because I want to go through everything myself for the sake of memorizing and studying Ash's style. Aw. I wonder if you'll see things that I'm not aware of myself. Like how much I like the word softly. <laughs> or how I like to break up dialogue with a so-and-so says in the middle. Well, I've noticed those things, obviously, but I wonder if you'll notice other things. Hmm. <laughs> Laura's talking about things that she's noticed working with me. <laughs> she says, here's one thing I noticed working with Ash. She really likes centered images and I like side images. <laughs> I feel bad because like I'll write a metric shit ton and then give it to Laura and be like, okay, now center the image. And a centered image takes up a lot more space than a side image. <laughs> and she's just like, oh. Hmm. Matt says, I've got a whole notepad full of writing notes that I've been adding to. I'd like to show it to you. I think you might like it. I probably would. I hope, I hope things in there, like, I hope my secrets and mystery have not been completely revealed. Can I spoil a Christmas present I almost bought you? Yeah. <clears throat> There's this book that um, Stephen King has done about writing. Uh -huh. And I thought about getting it for you because you love Stephen King, but then I remember you bitterly complaining about seeing a post of his advice for writing and how you thought it was all crap. So I was like, eh, Ash doesn't need advice from Stephen King. Was the book called On Writing? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Has don't, he done more than one? Probably not. Um, I, I think it's really hard to tell people how to write a good story because there are so many ways to write a good story. And Not according to Stephen King. Well, Stephen King is the sort of person who thinks that if you don't write 2,000 words a day, then you can't be a writer. Well, I mean, you could, though. For sure. I mean, I know I could, but there are plenty of writers who don't write 2,000 words a day, or who didn't, who still wrote magnificent things. Like, I feel like a lot of his advice is really oddly specific in terms of, like, having writing as a career. And from my own personal perspective, like... I have, well, I don't want to say I have no interest in writing as a career, because I think it could, excuse me. It's your career. I mean, I think it could be a fun career to have, depending on the circumstances. I also feel like it could be a total killjoy. Um, but... I also think it really depends on 
by what measuring stick you're trying to evaluate success as a writer. I like I'm sure some days I write 2,000 words. I'm sure, I mean, there's plenty of days when I write a whole hell of a lot more than that. But there are just as many days when I don't write that much. And I'm not some famous writer, you know, who lives in Florida in the cold months and in Maine in the summer months and has lots of properties and influence and stuff like that. But I still think my writing touches people. And has made a difference and I think people like my stories and I like my stories and my writing has helped like me establish relationships with people like you Elena and like you Laura and everyone else here and I don't really need you know a summer house in Maine I don't really think I would trade one for the other, like, I'm pretty happy with what my writing has gotten me, but by Stephen King's measuring stick, I have not succeeded. Therefore, I would like to break his measuring stick over my knee and toss it into the garbage. And it's true, I do like some of Stephen King's stories, but having, like, having read as many of them as I have, it's really easy to see where his comforts are, and it's easy to see the same tropes that he leans on again and again. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Like, obviously, he has made it into a recipe for at least commercial success. Um... Okay, this, no. huh? I was trying to make like a confetti kind of brush. It looks stupid. I have faith in you. <laughs> People in the chat are talking about Catherine's hair and what it would look like in real life. What if I forget the confetti and just put some sparkles on here? I mean, I think that's fine. Wow, this person's name is Emily. That's so pretty. Your name is what? Emily. I've never heard that in my life, but it's really pretty. I like it. Ash approved. Are there sparkles? Yeah. They're just kind of faint. They're faint, yeah. But you can see them. Hmm. I 
Oh, can you give them eye shine? That's what you mean. Okay. street address. This was supposed to be a, well, um, some, yeah, no, no, I think they want like a digital card. Uh, well, let's see if, out. <laughs> I don't have any out. I was going to see if anyone, so, anyone else's name is Spencer. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well. I'll just stick that one aside. That's fine. Do you want to hmm? get ready? We can. Why? Why are they? Why are the sw oh, Okay, you're messing with them. Can I see the picture again? Oh, can you put blushes on their cheeks? Matt said, Oscar is proficient in the Vulcan neck pinch. <laughs> oh, yes. It's true. Oh, I guess you could. You don't like it. Better like that. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <gasps> There's something about Oscar's face. What is it? Hmm. Okay. You can tweak it later. Okay. It looks really good, dear. I like it. We have 19% battery now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, let's get you some Chinese food. Oh, <laughs> Laura made the Vulcan joke first. I'm sorry. Something about cat's crown? What is it? Oh, there's a, a yellow spot in there. Or is that supposed to be there? That's supposed to be there. Oh, maybe the white spot is what Oh, doing. yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Everyone's like, crown! <laughs> oh, where the hell is that? Where? Oh, it's here. Okay. All right, so we're going to wrap it up now. Does anyone have any final questions? Thank you so much for coming, guys. Hmm. Matt asked if I'd seen the Google Doc he posted. Not yet. Uh, if you'll post it in the Discord later, Matt, I'll check it out. Which, by the way, I would like to take a moment to uh, say how much I think the Discord is just really, really amazing. It's such a cool community. I really like occasionally sticking my head in and being like, hi guys. Um, I think it's awesome, the friendships and stuff that I see happening there. The support network is incredible. And it's just all around a really excellent place. I'm really happy that Sister Claire has something like that. Yeah, I'm really super impressed by it.
<laughs> Arwen Trow says, everyone becomes seagulls. Ash, ash, ash. <laughs> oh, um, there's a couple comments. Zach says, Ash, I love seeing the pictures you post on your Twitter. Oh, I'm so glad because often I feel like I just annoy the shit out of people. So that's wonderful. I'm glad. I will continually post uh, somewhat um, skewed and blurry flower pictures. You're welcome. And BGB wants to know, how did Catherine conceal her magic from the twins for so long? Catherine does not use her magic often at all. Like, because it is, like, well, I don't want to say she doesn't use it often. I'm sure she spends quite a lot of time taking minor hurts from the children at the Abbey, you know, specifically Rosie, Marie, and Claire. But often, like, they would be hurts that, like headaches and things like that, stomach aches, things. And everyone would just assume that she had caught the thing, not that she took it with her magic. So there's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Matt is inviting you to join the Discord at some point, Elena, if you uh, feel up to it. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> I know Elena has said on multiple occasions how awesome it is, too. Yeah, I am really happy that it exists. Yeah, and we both think that it's an incredible labor, labor of love, and we're so pleased by it. On that note, hmm, I think we will say good night. Do you want to sing, Elena? Do you feel like singing? Mm -hmm. Good night, good night, good night, good night.